health care. For most of us, it's a bill we get after a procedure, or it's a prescription we get at the doctor's office. To bring two movers and shakers like Nadine and Stefan together is a treat. A treat for me, a treat for you. You and I sat here in Houston a year ago. <laughs> and there is an iconic robotic entrepreneur who sat at a table at a conference down here and thought that the gap in your game was that you didn't have hardware. I think he's changed his mind recently. I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the venture community is. They are. Especially, we couldn't imagine COVID. And um, there's always, you know, an opportunity in a crisis. And I think it sets you up extraordinarily well. And, and, and so here's the toughest question for you that I'm gonna have, because you know I love asking those <laughs> questions. You are starting to become the voice of a category, mm -hmm. whether you want it or not, <laughs> because you're a surgeon, you're a CEO, you're on a missionary instead of a mercenary issue, right? Most of the others in this category, Nadine, are here on a mercenary for the dollar, but you are not. So are you gonna shoulder being the voice of this category? I feel like, you know, quite frankly, I think, you know, it's almost, it's almost a duty. I think, you know, as a surgeon and as the, one of the earliest thinkers around how we need to move forward with this, um, you know, I take pride in the fact that I'm able to share that story uh, and share it in a way that's thoughtful mm -hmm. and so much more about impact and mm -hmm. mission. Of course, you know, it's about making sure there's sustainability in your business, but in a way that's really um, delicate and meaningful and impactful. So, um, you know, I think we're obviously starting out on our journey. It's only been a few years, but, um, you know, I, I love what we do. I love the impact and I love sharing our story and empowering other people to do it. So, so far, I think, um, yeah, that's, that's where things are heading. Mm, yeah, well, that's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Let's go. Come on, you're going to take a walk with us? He's really comfortable around he here. He is. They know. They say they know. Yeah. Drinks, take one, Tom and Mark. It's just that we want the, the story. Stories. It's, it's the, the story. story. Yeah, I've been told that before. It's if, it's so if you want to be successful in raising money, you've got to tell a good story. Sorry. It's it's Because it's not about profit at the, at the early investors, it's about the story. We buy emotionally, justify logically. Yeah. And unless you can absolutely have that emotional buy-in by the visceral, visceral storytelling, then they'll back it up with evidence. And this is the biggest, when I consult for clients and they show me their pitch deck, and invariably most pitch decks open up, and yours never did, with clinical data. And that is the most inopportune thing to do. I had an investor once tell me, so on our pitch deck, the first slide always has my picture, my words, what, we, what our vision is, like what we're trying to do. And I had someone tell me, why are, you, why are you making yourself the face of the company? That's not good because, you know, you, you, you can't sell, like, you know, it's gonna, you're going to be the bottleneck of the business. And I said, that's not how we see it. We, I am telling the story of surgery, and Proxima is the enabler of that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And then again, that comes back to everything we do in life. You justify this gorgeous home after you emotionally imagined it. Mm -hmm. And then you went ahead and you're like, okay, let's put it down on paper now because you had to justify those decisions. And everything we do in life, yeah. we do that with. And so I don't know why CEOs and when we're looking to raise money, don't follow that. And when you can keep the story in front of the audience, and what's interesting is your audience is the, the, the physician, the venture people, the payers, the institutions, the patients, those are all, and you have to be able to tell the sub stories to each of those sort of categories. And we have never in our life had such a stage to play on as we have today with LinkedIn because every single one of those people are on there. And at scale, instead of you going around the globe pitching to one it's VC one. and then another VC, and then, or hoping to show up at a show, um, like we won't say which shows they are, but we all get that 15 minutes of podium time to do our pitch. And then the four strategics are in the audience and maybe 17 other VCs. And then you hope to get five minutes with them. 
that's not efficient use of time in a digital age. But every single day, telling that story digitally for one and a half minutes, that's how you get inside that circle. That's why I thought it was so great when the LinkedIn Live was done, because it was an amazing platform to showcase great talent, meaningful surgery, life-changing, but also the enabling technologies that are allowing us to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, who thought at uh, 9.20 on Friday morning you'd be dialing in to watch uh, a master, an unbelievable surgical robot, a patient who's generous to share enough of uh, this case with us, and uh, four other stakeholders from around the globe having a total knee done. Uh, welcome to 21st century medicine. <laughs> this is crazy. What we really believe is that it has to move to more of prepare, perform, and perfect. Very similar to athletics, when you watch game tapes, you do the procedure and capture that digital footprint, and then you go back and you review your performance to see how you can do better. And so by having many people involved, we're all pushing each other for excellence, we're learning, we're sharing expertise, and we're not inhibiting access to operating rooms. So it's really about crowdsourcing that expertise. You know, for us, being able to showcase the proxy platform being used, but being used in the hands of a fantastically skilled surgeon who's doing, and, and talking through what, what he experiences in a day-to-day, -day. you know, there's the, there's the background story, there's the actual surgery itself, there's the patient story, there's the system story, um, and ultimately we're able to do that because we're able to stream that case using Proxime. So it just, it's, it's connecting the dots. And because we were able to stream through the Proxime platform, that high definition, the four feeds, you feel like you're standing in the OR with him. It was a great conversation. I mean, I obviously was watching uh, and interacting as well, but you guys had a great dialogue going. And we've never met each other before that, right? We've been fans of each other, yeah. and we, we, we didn't even test had, it. No, we've had one conversation. And right, that's, about, that's yeah. right, that's yeah. right, one, one conversation, but yeah. we didn't test it. Like, we didn't call in, okay, is it good to go, Stefan? I don't know, let me check here, let's check bandwidth, <laughs> let's check, let's, nothing. We dialed in, boop, we're in the middle of somebody's knee opening up. Yeah. And, and Proximy is one of those platforms, I think, so in my lifetime, I've been at this 30 years and impacting the healthcare medtech industry for 30 years. Proximy is the first platform that is a multi-threat sort of monetization opportunity, education. Um, its own health tech TV channel. Mm -hmm. We can take two dozen world-class performers, one in ortho, one in structural heart, one in gyno, one in uh, bariatrics, and create an entire learning platform. And not just for aspiring clinicians who need to learn, but the 14-year-old who knew Absolutely. she was going to be already a RICO <laughs> surgeon, right? Yeah. And so just think of the monetization. I just hope that the people who s supply the money to this ecosystem look at a platform like Proximy as a multi-threat, which is much larger than rubbing the pennies out of the nickels in an OR. Mm -hmm. And somebody has that vision to say, wait a minute, this is an entire broadcast network product platform that is well beyond anything I've seen before. So that's where I think this goes. And, and, and yeah. I think we've got to put enough pressure on the industry and the players who are outside, and thank God for the Amazons and the Apples and the Samsungs and the IBMs, because they don't think of it as a med device industry. They think of it as a digital industry that is meant to be broadcast to billions and not a couple hundred thousand that will use a knee that you put in yesterday as we sat in your, in your surgery. So. Yeah. And you know, let the device company use Proximity for their advantage. Yes. Like if you want to use it to, to develop a new knee and you want to change the, the process by having these live broadcasting surgery or cadaver workshops or whatever. I mean, we did a Think Surgical cadaver workshop and we used Proximity to broadcast it and there were surgeons that right. got the benefit of, of watching because they didn't have to travel. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a phone, right? Everybody should have access to a phone. Everybody should have access to Proximity. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why we, when we think about the access, you know, I love what you said about the, you know, 14 year olds, you know, the, it, it, you know, we keep talking, keep talking about it not being about a moment in time because what you're taking is you're digitizing that experience and making it accessible to whoever wants it. In healthcare, it could be students, medical school, interns, residents, fellows, surgeons, nurses, physios, 
your users could be a user for 50 years. It's not limited to a potential time in their career that is momentary. It's two years, three years. No, it's their whole career. Mm -hmm. That continuous cycle, understanding that we need to think more of a continuum in, in healthcare and surgery makes that beneficial for them, for the students that are thinking about surgery, for the medical students that are trying to understand the anatomy and trying to figure out what they're reading in the book and what does that mean in an operating room. And those that are trying to refine their craft, refine their skills, or learn and see nuances or new spins on the technique that can actually get better outcomes. That's what you can do virtually. But then there's the whole public side of it where you empower, you give choice, you give access, which was never there before. So that concept of the open platform, the accessible platform is so critical because we've never had that before. Everything has always been so siloed mm -hmm. in specific traditional video libraries mm -hmm. or traditional systems, traditional company run kind of textbooks that are siloed around a specific procedure, a specific surgeon. And so we've really, really tried to maintain that kind of openness because that vision goes back to wake. It's about that foundational connection layer that becomes the foundation of all the other exciting things that we may have not even thought about that can be done. That's right, and I think you're creating a market, you just nailed it. As I'm thinking about it, why the credit card companies solicit the 17 year old who's going into college. Because once I have you, it. it's an LTV, a lifetime value of the Absolutely. customer. And if I get that newly minted, I'm going into med school and I'm watching a world-class surgeon with his craft on my Proximy platform because I subscribe to it. Mm -hmm. So let's even go crazier here. <laughs> sell a subscription to Proximy for the lifetime of somebody who wants it. It might be somebody who's just interested in surgery. Mm -hmm. I have a Netflix subscription. I have a Disney Channel subscription. Why would I not have a Proximy right. subscription? As a medical student. As a, or as just a consumer. People yeah. watch the it's silliest thing on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and then I graduate to then, maybe I'm like Stefan, where I'm working with med tech companies for innovation in devices. Well, there, this is, this is my, in a positive way, my Swiss Army knife. I can use it any way I want. That's it's exactly connecting that. people. It's a Swiss Army knife. That's how I've been thinking, because when people say, well, give me the one problem we're solving, I'm like, I can't. I can't. It, there's many, it solves many things. It, it, it solves for a greater concept but the use cases are multiple. Mm -hmm. You know, just think about Stefano's operating. You know, we could be in there because he's showing us a new robot that actually isn't on the market that they're testing or trying. Yeah. Or he, it's a traditional operation, but he does it so well, I want to get in and see it. Or it's anatomy, or, I mean, you, you've worked with so many different robots and so many different kits, and it's so great. Every time I'm in there, I'm learning something new. And I'm not even an orthopedic surgeon, but I'm interested. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that ability to, to leverage that and the skill set and share it is just so powerful. Yeah, from a development cycle, I mean, I mentioned that when we were doing the surgery, you know, we were doing uh, an, an assessment of different brooches, and the engineers in London could see much better than if they had been in the operating room. Mm -hmm. You know, you save the airfare, mm -hmm. you save the hotel, mm -hmm. you save the time. Speed of innovation is crazy. Yeah. And then how about the person who couldn't make the meeting, Yeah. but the, the entire gameplay is there on the videotape. Let's go to the videotape, yeah. right? I mean, how many emails have we answered to schedule a meeting? Right. right. I mean, endless, right? Yeah. This is much easier. Yeah, so, well, I'm gonna hold you accountable, <laughs> Miss Nadine, and I won't be sad when somebody does come with the number that should be for you, but uh, let's hope they have the right intention in mind. Yeah. This has been great. is to the courageous, the proud, and the health tech pioneers. <laughs> Sounds great. So. Cheers. Cheers. It's always interesting as we get older, it gets harder to make friends. And I think that's because the people that we would want to be friends with are busy doing big things, changing the world. And so every once in a while, you get to hang around those people and you have aligned interests. And this is one of those times.